and that was beautiful. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to the ongoing Supper Song and Praise COVID edition, where we have a skeleton crew, but a powerful crew of saints here present, including uh, Roger Pan, who just played that beautiful piece, and Keith Stein, Reverend Ozar, thank you both very much for being here. Uh, let's do a quick announcement. What uh, the Epiphany Episcopal Church would rather have you hear twice rather than not at all is that the uh, Bishop of Nevada, given that there apparently are still an increase of cases of COVID, has decided there will not be services for at least the month of June, and the topic will be revisited in July. You guys are my polling group. How many of you already knew this? See, so some person, it was new for one of you, great. <laughs> and uh, in, in video world, uh, uh, Rick O'Brien, the rector of the parish, has written a long letter that you can see on the Epiphany website, Epiphany Episcopal Church, Las Vegas, um, or you can also see it on our Facebook page. We want to get that information out there as much as possible. Now, that said, that sounds dreary, but the fact of Epiphany is that we have a ton of services. We're continuing to do our live stream every Sunday at 10 a.m., which Lots of you are watching very regularly and guiding us in what's working there, so thank you for that. Every morning at 9 a.m. from Monday through Saturday, we have a brief but um, important little uh, meditation or message to offer. These Wednesday nights will continue the COVID edition of Supper, Song, and Prayer, and also on Thursday nights we have Centering Prayer. Additionally, um, every Sunday morning at 9 to 9.30 a.m., Rick is continuing to do the Faith Matters, which is a virtual discussion of the Gospel of the Week. I think that's all our services. And uh, so anyway, we are the church. We continue to worship, and there are lots of opportunities to uh, praise God and to grow in spirit, now as always. Tonight's hymn is, is this called Christ Before Us or Peace Before Us? Peace, Peace Before Us. Very simple song. I know most of you know that. We're going to do... The first two verses, which are the peace and love, to begin the evening. Peace before us. change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking, as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Tonight's psalm is Psalm 16. What on earth is it? Let's read it. Excuse me, sorry. Psalm 16, and we're doing verses 8 to 11. It's on page 600 in the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 16, verses 8 through 11. Let's say it in unison. I have set the Lord always before me, 
Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope, for you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your holy one see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. It is so absolutely exciting to be able to introduce Xavier Nakatini tonight. I've got a lot of bio here, a lot of important stuff. Xavier is 16 years old, and he will be a junior at the Coral Academy of Science in Las Vegas in Henderson. Right? Uh, beginning this fall, and uh, he's a great student, uh, very talented young man. And is it safe to say, uh, Kristen, Xavier's old for his age? Yeah. Kind of an old soul. Wise soul. Mm -hmm. yeah, and just a mature, yeah. Kind of, it's a clear vibe. Kid we want as parents. Well done. <laughs> he, uh, Xavier, in addition to being so talented and a great student, he has recently released his first album on, I'm going to get this right, SoundCloud and YouTube. It's a rap album, right? Yeah. And it's called Ambition, and it's good stuff. I've played a couple tracks, and I highly recommend it. Ambition, and you can find it on SoundCloud and YouTube. There's the last thing I'm going to mention. Um, about Zanian just this day, not even yet at 12 hours, Zanian got what's called Invisalign on his teeth. And those of you who have ever worn a retainer or had braces, you know that on the first day you get it, it is a bit of a challenge, one, to deal with the pain, but also to say an S. So <laughs> he didn't want to apologize or, you know, but I, I want to let you know on his behalf, he's speaking really, really well, given that he's adjusting to a brand new oral reality here. Did I mention all the things I need to mention? It is with my, it's with great pleasure, let's lovingly welcome Xavier McTeen.
brought a discomforting realization in knowing exactly what I'm looking for. We searched the entirety of the house three times and the wash behind my house. That night, when I was laying in bed, I waited that, for that familiar jingle from, jingle from her collar that brought a sensation of completion to my day, only to be stood up by silence. The yelps of coyotes in the moonlight carried my brain into a frenzy. Two days passed with no sign of our beloved feline. Zia and I were on our way to school, and the car ride held in eerie silence. That silence was broken by a subtle and subdued jingle. I thought I was hallucinating until I saw my sister's hand slowly move toward her car keys that were inconspicuously hanging from their slot in her steering wheel. A tear slowly rolled down her cheek. A week passed, and we were learning to cope with our loss. My mom and I were sitting in the car on our way home from my soccer practice. There's something that your grandmother always told me when I was young, my mom said. What is it? I replied in a soft and sad voice. It's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Amen. This quote gave me a warm, tingling se sensation that washed over my body. I then realized that I had come to terms with the reality of what really happened and all the possibilities of why my pet was missing. Instead of consigning to oblivion, I decided to let my emotions flow free like a rapid river rushing downstream. Afterward, I felt extra extraordinarily better about the situation and my feelings about, a miss about the missing piece of our family. When I got home, I could tell my sister was not feeling the same way. Since she tends to be more reserved, I decided not to speak with her on the matter. Another few weeks had passed, and we had practically given up all hope of a return. Our lives continued as regular, but felt empty and bland. Car rides continued to be filled with a sort of awkward silence, and the keys lost their subtle jingle. Dreaming night after night about my black cat sitting silently in my doorway, only to be met with morning sunlight and a dreary day to follow it. We told her story to many that had asked for the tale. She's probably not coming back, we would say. She was a free spirit. On an ordinary day, about six and a half weeks after the disappearance, I was getting in my mom's car after school. How was your day at school? She asked me as usual. Boring and irregular, I said. We proceeded to have our daily after-school chat discussing our days, my homework, and food. We pulled into the garage slowly as I looked over at her face. I could see a, sl a sly smile as we got out of the car. We walked into the house and through the laundry room. I turned to be met by a pair of small green eyes, dusky fur, and a quiet meow. Mixed emotions were rushing into my mind as I was trying to find the right words to say. Oh my gosh, I exclaimed as a smile the size of the sea spread across my face. I was trying my best not to tell you the car, my mom said while covering her mouth with her hand in excitement. I picked up Pip, sat down, and put her in my lap. The 10 minutes that she sat there was the best 10 minutes I had ever experienced. I spent the rest of my day in shock after hearing that my cat was found on the other side of town, almost 40 minutes away from my house. Later that night, I climbed in bed as usual. I closed my eyes and waited. I then heard that jingle, and I knew a light had returned to me with the help of God. Come on, excellent. I've got a question. Do you still have Pip? Yes, I we do. How and how old is she? I don't know. She's a stray. Uh -huh. But she's probably yep. four, around four. Oh, so she's young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, she's, so. she's, she's still quite young. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's a really small cat. Is that like <laughs> controlling me to say never let her out of the house again? <laughs> Make that an indoor cat. <laughs> she wasn't meant for the streets. Yeah, some cats aren't. She survived. Somehow she survived.
Oh, given the coyote population, that really is miraculous. And it was during the period that we had snow and terrible weather in 2019 through the winter of that, but she made it. Wow. Let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And Xavier, if you'd be kind enough to lead us in the blessing. Go in peace as we seek God. Live Christ and share the Spirit. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Thank you again, Zavian. Thank you all, and God bless. See you tomorrow morning.